So I've just now uh, finished watching the budget and, of course, the response from Rachel Reeves. And as I said before, I think we've got to sort of really wait. And I want to see what other experts are going to sort of lay into it, see what they say are going to be the pros and cons. I think some of the big takeaways is that certainly Sunak will have the majority of the party on his side. I've yet to see any Tories come out and say, this was a bad budget. Sunak should not have, have, have done this. So it seems, at least for now, Sunak is somewhat safe with his budget. But one of the big problems I've said he's going to encounter is a general sense of listlessness. Because what does Rishi Sunak do now beyond the budget? He was built up as sort of selling this budget. It's very likely that it is going to pass in the next couple of weeks. The question becomes, then what? This is, this the, the Tory party under Sunak becomes completely listless. And for a perfect example, just look at what happened to Boris Johnson. Now, Bo Johnson's reason for the complete Tory party listlessness was a complete lack of of leadership. And to be honest, Sunak hasn't really shown a, a strong sense of leadership either. But for the fact that there is no serious plan going forward, the, the Tory party, it just becomes a ship adrift at sea. And one of the big problems we've talked about before is the fact that Rishi Sunak has now lost Gavin Williamson, and Gavin Williamson was his hard man, the man you would send in to deal with any sort of, uh, you know, troublesome MP raising, you know, trouble on the back benches. Well, now Sunak no longer has that card to play, and with a completely listless party, just because they all seem quiet now doesn't mean that maybe after Christmas in a couple of, you know, maybe in a couple of months time, that sort of quiet does not remain. Um, but of course, we'll have to see certainly uh, over the weekend how uh, sort of Tory MPs get the reaction from their constituents. I do not think, as I've said before, this budget will go down well. Uh, it's certainly not going to go down well uh, in the Red War. So I expect a lot of panic from Northern, uh, certainly, MPs over the weekend and certainly following on uh, from Monday. But that's certainly another video for another time. And like I say, don't worry, we will be discussing the budget and sort of how this potentially sort of affects sort of us in the UK and, and what happens from there. But today we're going to focus on Gavin Williamson because Gavin Williamson's career is both fascinating, frightening, and filled with tales of dark arts and skullduggery. <laughs> and it's quite inter entertaining one at that. But this is truly a story of a man who tried to rise to the heavy heights, and every time he seemed to get there, he seemed to almost plummet back down, back into the sort of the pits from whence he came. <laughs> so... As always, uh, before we do go getting into this, please do remember to hit that like, share and subscribe button. And of course, uh, thank you very much to all those people who do help uh, and support uh, the channel. Like I say, down below, there are the links to my Patreon page and our rotation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can buy me coffee. There is also the YouTube thank you button down below as well. And of course, there is the Pony Club you can join as well. So as always, thank you very much to everyone who does support the channel. Even if you do, just hit the like and share button. So over uh, to the Northwest bylines with their take on this of Gavin Williamson's last day. Sir Gavin Williamson, the MP, the minister without portfolio, the master of the Machiavellian dark arts of Tory politics, glanced at his barely used ministerial red box for one last time and put his signature to his resignation letter. How did it come to this? Well, First of all, the story of the spider and the spreadsheet. So he emailed the latest copy of his Excel spreadsheet, the coronas.xls, named after his pet tarantula, to his private Gmail account and then deleted all of the copies from his government laptop. He knew the information in this document could be key to making it back into the cabinet after all, 
It had already worked for him three times under three different prime ministers in his 12 years as an MP. He was confused as to why it failed to protect him for more than two weeks under the current incumbent in number 10. But it would also allow him to keep fighting as a return to the back benches. And Williamson picked this up from a framed picture of Francis Eucarp, signed by Ian Richardson. Though he thought little of the Kevin Spacey remake, The House of Cards, and he placed it carefully in his briefcase. Back in 2010, as a newly elected MP for South Suffolkshire, and after a career in fireplaces and ceramics, Williamson had his eye on a promotion and looked for ways to climb the greasy pole without delay. The answer came to him early in his time in Parliament. It was obvious to him that he needed to have a network of MPs he could control. This network would be valuable resources that he could deploy to boost support for any cause or person he chose, and he would be able to demand a high price for his support. He believed that all of his colleagues had something to hide. He thought that this uh, this occurred and hadn't uh, <laughs> that this hadn't and didn't need to know just what it was, just that he had his victims think that he knew what it was. His charisma and charm could take you a long way, but sometimes you need a little extra. And in those days, he used a real little black book, which he would pull out when he and his target were sitting alone in an office, or more typically, a bar, when the conversation turned to scandal, as it often did. He would then flick through it, ostentatiously, and write down the name of the MP, and would then elaborate with ceremony about the some random comment such as the red polar neck sweater, the ink stain on the trousers, the big Arsenal fan. Years later, he pioneered the use of mobile phones for his purpose. In either case, it was the result that was the same, and his colleagues would get the distinct impression that Williamson had somehow learned something about his of his or her guilty secret. And subsequently, when you needed a vote to be won, Williamson would make a great play of referring to his records. Let's see what we have on you, he would say. Hmm, we don't really want this in the sun, do we? It was almost no one ever challenged on what he knew or what his colleagues would meekly needed to even tiptoe to the party line. Once the hapless victim had demonstrated his weakness, it was recorded as he made it almost certain the same trick would work again. The technique worked brilliantly, and this acquired a reputation as an effective operator that Theresa May made him chief whip. And of course, this was a post that he was about to gather a genuine lot of, of dirt, making his little black spreadsheet even more effective than his infamous pet spider. A classic example of the Peter Principle, under which people are promoted to a high level when they are incompetent, was then unexpectedly made Defence Secretary in 2017, and his intellect and grasp of global security issues were aptly demonstrated when he prom uh, promptly said, frankly, Russia should go away and it should shut up. He was fired in 2019 for leaking sensitive information to the press. But he knew just what to do next. He was an early supporter of Boris Johnson when he ran for the Tory leader, and partly because Johnson was likely to win, but made him because of the volume of the scandalous material he had on the man. There was no record of the conversation that resulted in Johnson offering Williamson the post for Secretary of State for Education. He stood with an extraordinary incompetence, during, uh, especially during the exam grading crisis of the COVID pandemic. Many workers in education sector came to pine for the good old days of when Michael, Dove, Michael Gove and Dominic Cummings were in charge. And in September of 2021, Johnson should reshuffle his cabinet and even the spreadsheet could not save Williamson. Further uh, and future favours were called in and a knighthood was awarded earlier in 2022, described by the Liberal Democrats as an insult to every child, parent and teacher who struggled to get through COVID against the odds. And of course, the third time, remarkably, Williamson pulled the same trick again, and he supported Rishi Sunak, and he is ultimately a successful bid for the Tory leadership. And a broad spectrum of MPs across the party voted for Sunak, and many being persuaded by the former chief whip and his feared database of human failings. The reward was yet another return to cabinet, though no real job could be found for a man with such limited talent as he was appointed minister without portfolio. 
past. By this time, though, Williamson had so many enemies that the allegations of bullying and offensive behavior quickly spread. And a story snowballed that was then forced to resign less than two weeks after taking office. So Sir Gavin Williamson has closed his office door for the last time, left to left building and walking up the slow of Whitehall. He walked head down and feverishly scanned his spreadsheet, trying to determine to identify the potential next possible Tory leader, or even fated to repeat an endless cycle of behind the scenes manipulation, promotion, failure, and disgrace. He didn't realize it that in his hurry to keep the devastating secret spreadsheet safe, he had perhaps in an unconscious attempt to break the doom loop of his, of his career, emailed his entire namesake, an investigative reporter at The Guardian. So, yeah, that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is the, the sad and lurid tale of, of Gavin Williamson. And now he's he's on the back benches. It's don't worry, he will probably be on the prowl. I think it is very right. He will be out there looking to see who will be the person to replace, you know, Rishi Sunak and trying to sort of, you know, get in good with them, at least while the getting is good. Uh, and of course, Sunak's gonna face a lot of problems. And the fact that you now have two very, very dangerous sort of beasts on the back bench, that one of a very, very upset and hungry for revenge, Boris Johnson, and one, of course, very upset Gavin Williamson, certainly will also be out for revenge as well. The question is, will these two forces unite to become one incredible chimera? It's possible, but it's something we're going to have to keep our eyes on. That is for certain. But, as always... Thank you very much for watching, and of course, please remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button on your way out, and of course, as always, we'll see you all next time.